Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And this little video is, it's actually a redo of one of the very first videos that I did uh, for the channel. Um, I was back at my house then, I was in the spare room recording on dodgy webcam, not good microphones, all that type of stuff. But it was content and that's that's how it all started. And now here we are in the studio, just doing a kind of ad hoc one just now. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time, so I'm just on the webcam. But hopefully the sound will be okay. Um, note bending is a facility, an exercise, whatever you want to call it, um, that I love doing on the trumpet. Um, the series of videos that I'm doing just now for the channel about playing with discomfort or injuries or pain, etc. and still having to do a job, it, this kind of slots into that because note bending is a huge part of my routine anyway but specifically this video is about basic note bending and an introduction to note bending the other video which may actually be posted already by now if it is i'll get a link to it up here or up here or something and this they, that that video focuses on the note bending exercises from laurie frank's flexus studies which is a fantastic study it really really is so back to basic note bending no bending was one of the first exercises that I found really helped sort out my sound. And the basic study that you will see in a wee second from what I have learned, the basic study that you will hear in the background is the basic study that I teach to my beginner trumpet players who have maybe just progressed on a little bit further than learning to make a sound. So they've got a degree of control of instruments certainly through the, the bottom part of our usual usual written register I really do need those teeth changed and I'm trying to maybe get the best out of the sound from them so why note bending? note bending for me is about finding the centre of the pitch and when we find the centre of the pitch and I'm not just talking about in the middle register where these note bending exercises take place but throughout the full register of the instrument this is where our sound starts to come alive without having to push a lot of air through this, the trumpet to try and get a full sound. I aim to get as full a sound as possible with as little energy as possible and then as you start to excite that energy a little bit more with, with dynamics or range or style te technique, it should happen that little bit more efficiently. So, on to some actual note bending and how do we do it? Note bending, for me, the best way that I can describe it, I'm going to talk about the embouchure as a whole here, I'm not going to go into specifics, I don't want to complicate this too much. Note bending as a whole is when we relax the embouchure. You can always think about it as just detuning the sound and letting the sound fall away. Pretty much like this. Beautiful, yeah? So you can hear how obviously that G fell down to a C and as I just kept relaxing and not holding on to the pitch whatsoever, no support, it would continue going down. The one thing about note bending that makes it tricky and the initial hurdle is the air. You could hear there that I was blowing all the way through. The air didn't stop, the sound became more diffused, fell out of pitch, fell down to the next pitch and would keep on going. This is also a little bit of a kind of uh, a side step into learning how to do lip flexibilities, etc. It's a very, very similar process that I use and I teach in terms of detuning upwards or detuning downwards. And actually, in the Laurie Frank flexes that I've referenced, there is a fantastic excerpt in there about detuning to your higher pitch. I'm not going to go into that now. Basic note bending, okay? So once we've detuned our note and learning to hold it there, that's like one of the golden concepts of trying to make sure that we are in control of our embouchure. So I'll detune again, and what I'll do is I'll just hold the bent pitch. So that's a bent note. What about coming back up? And what about where we're bending to? So in the basic 
note bending exercise that I'm playing as a semitone note bend that we're doing. You can bend further than this and all you're really doing there is taking the control of the embouchure that little bit further to go to a different pitch. The beauty about this semitone note bending exercise, closing the title, is that we're going to semitone and that we're only going to semitone so we're referencing that pitch that we're moving to by playing the semitone. Now in this particular study all the valve fingerings including the bent pitches fingerings are on the PDF. This PDF is out there for free so I don't think there's any problem with me sharing it online. I'll put a copy on the screen, maybe even straight over my face so you can't see my lovely beardedness. But what we'll do is I'll do the bent exercise now pretty much that you're hearing in the, ba in the background. So that's it. Play the F sharp, bend down to the F sharp from the G and come back up. I think the pitch reference is quite important because it gives us a pitch to aim for and to hold with our embouchure. We can learn to hold our embouchures in particular shapes. Now, in terms of trumpet playing, I believe our embouchure should always be as free as possible to respond to whatever pitch and dynamic we're playing. But in my particular trumpet, and I think trumpets in general, but with my setup, my A in the middle of the register and on the top of the stave is quite sharp. So having the ability to actually bring that pitch into tune really, really helps. So I don't always have the time if it's a quicker note or a faster passage to use my first valve trigger. And if I just think, clean my trumpet, then that may be quite stiff because I use quite a heavy uh, slide grease. So having the ability to control our embouchure through note bending helps us throughout our range. The, the trumpet is inherently out of tune and I don't care what brand of trumpet you've got, be it Schilke, Monet, JP, whatever it is, these notes are out of tune. And yet a lot of us try to play in tune as best as we can and I think it's really, really good to strive to do that, but having the ability to manipulate our embouchures is very, very important because if you're playing in tune and you're in second and third or fourth trumpet, but your lead trumpet player is all over the place, guess who you have to follow? It's that guy in lead trumpet or maybe the piano and the band is out of tune. Whatever it is, we have to be able to manipulate our tuning in such a way that we're not using the slides all the time. It might be very, very quick tuning. So, other concepts of note bending ear training, like I said, for tuning. But the final gold, golden aspect that I think that note bending is really, really good for is blossoming our sound, trying to get our sound to be as full and relaxed and open as possible. Quite often, at the start of a day or maybe after a long session, the next day or further down, I might be quite tight here. Maybe there's some swelling going on or maybe just a general fatigue or puffiness that's going on. And quite often what that will result in is playing high in the pitch. A lot of us don't think about this. And if you play with a diffused sound or you are questioning why you have a diffused sound, this might be a good thing to look at. So I'll try and demonstrate just playing on a diffused sound, okay? I'll just play a scale. I was playing high on every one of those pitches. So I'll just go back and I'll play the same scale again and I'll just bring every pitch back down to where I feel the sound fills out, okay? Incidentally, these are all going from sharp into in tune. <laughs> Not the most scientific ways of doing it. Probably could have had a tuner up there, etc. to make sure. But you can hear how that diffused sound, not doing anything really other than just like lowering the pitch back down, all of a sudden the sound just relaxes a little bit more. It's not quite as obvious if you're playing flat because you might actually be playing in your centre of the pitch and your tuning slide might not be in the right place. And that's the other thing is as well, if mechanically our trumpet is out of tune, for example, clean your trumpet, 
I do this all the time, put everything back together, go and play in the gig, and it's like, why am I playing so sharp? I've not pulled my tuning slide back out. So when you're experimenting with note bending, try and find where your pitch is naturally centered, okay? Do some note bending exercises, keep your eye on the tuner, and then when you bend back up from your notes, keep your eye on your tuner again and see where you are. Now, it may very well be then that you're just returning back to the pitch that you started at. Nine times out of ten for me, if I'm starting off at the beginning of the day, my pitch settles back down that little bit flatter than where I started out. Even if I thought I was in tune, then that centre of the pitch is actually that little bit lower. It's a match between the centre of pitch in me and a match of, and centre of pitch in the trumpet as well. Trumpet will try and make a note happen wherever it is. That's why our flexibilities are happening. We can push through the ranges of this pipe, okay? But we can still get it wrong and the trumpet, well, it'll kind of fight against us, you know, and that's where that diffusion comes from because we're blown beyond the centre of that pitch in the trumpet. Right, starting to get a little bit too technical here. Basic note exercises. This exercise in the background is kind of dipped in and out. I am just going to post that as a standalone example of the note bending exercises. And I hope you enjoy this. Um, if nobody has experienced note bending before or gone down that route, pop me a message. I'm happy to get into it a little bit more intensely if you want to. Check out the note bending from Flexes that I have demonstrated as well as part of my... I don't know, playing through discomfort? Is that the name of the the the, uh, the playlist? I don't know, I've not decided yet. And that's all. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like if you have made it all the way to this end, end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay smart, don't forget to practice, and I'll see you here next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.
One, two. <clears throat> All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a, a, a revision of one of my very, very first videos that I ever made for YouTube. Uh, back then, I was still recording in the spare room of my house. Um, and yeah, now we're in the studio. So this video is all about note bending. Now, I am actually recording this as part of a series that I'm doing on playing with injuries or discomfort, etc. That type of thing. And whilst this is a very, very basic introduction to note bending, there is another video coming along, maybe released already, about some more in-depth note bending from the Flexus book by Laurie Frank. So, a little word to say about playing with injuries or discomfort. If you are playing with, sorry, if you are playing trumpet with uh, injuries or discomfort, and you're not sure why they're happening, be sure to get that checked out. We should never really play in any form whatsoever with injuries, discomfort, pain, etc. Get it checked out. It could be as simple as um, a dental checkup. You might need equipment change, etc. But whatever it is, try to never just persevere. Always try and find out what the problem is there. Because trumpet playing should be relatively easy. And it should certainly be fun. And I know certainly with my dental condition just now that sometimes just having to do the gig for the sake of doing the gig is pretty discomfort, pretty uncomfortable rather, with a lot of discomfort and occasionally not enjoyable. So all my playing is finished now. My operation is due to be on February 16th 
and I should be getting my front teeth here uh, removed and surgical implants put in. So I've gone into that in other, other videos and I'm not going to go into it now. Note bending. So I've already started playing in the background, you can hear. This was the very, very first note bending exercise that I found on the internet. I have been, I had been doing internet, sorry. I had been doing note bending prior to finding this exercise and, and it was pretty much straightforward. I can't even remember how or when I found out about note bending, but I'd been doing it for a long time. And it wasn't until I actually went looking for a study that I found this one. Can't tell you where it came from. I do know, as I've already mentioned, that there are note bending exercises from various um, fantastic studies out there. So I've already mentioned flexes. There's there's also stamp. Um, I am sure there are lots more out there that I haven't come across. I'm drawing a blank right now. But certainly th those two are certainly some of the more... Um, popular and famous versions. So why note bending? There's a lot of people out there don't agree with it. There's a lot of people don't do it, have never done it before, don't know what it is. So basically, when you're playing a long note, the best way I can describe it is you relax your embouchure, and I'm not I'm going to be too specific on this because this video has been a load of help to a lot of my basic students, uh, sorry, beginner students as well. Basically, you loosen your embouchure in such a way that we detune and it's also very similar to how many of us start to learn about our lip flexibilities there is another video for that i will either share in the comment or put a link somewhere up here in terms of introdu introduction to lip flexibilities and when we detune our playing it does a few things we can relax our embouchure here we can relax the tongue level in the in our mouth we can open our aperture here a little bit. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not going into it too in depth. Suffice to say is that what we want to do is a D tuned note and then come back up. As you can hear in the video behind me, I'm doing semitone bends. I'll include a copy of this PDF. I might even just put a copy up on the screen and hide my ugly mug from talking away just to see what it is that I'm actually playing. But these are semitone note bends, and all these semitone note bends are doing is introducing a detuned pitch and then bringing it back up. When I'm teaching this to my students, first of all, I hope we can all play a standard note. Any pitch doesn't really matter, and then we can start to deviate that pitch, bend down from that pitch. So if we think about the bending initially as a detuning, maybe the best part of the actual note bend is returning back to the pitch centre, which is really what note tuning, note bending is about, is about for me. When I return back up to pitch on my trumpet, I like to think about I'm supporting the note back to the centre of where that pitch is. And I try to think about the sound having this round, fuller feeling, almost that I'm filling the whole centre of the pipe of the trumpet. Okay. So if you give me a second, I'll just demonstrate this. I'll pause the video behind me, what's going on with the lesson, or rather the exercise, and we'll have a wee look at this. So that detuning and then returning to the pitch centre is really the core aspect of what note tuning does for me. There are other benefits from it, I believe, that help us to learn about our tuning, ways to manipulate the aperture in terms of sound that are also both volume and pitch. But more than anything else, it's about learning to control our pitch and try and find the centre of that pitch so that the sound is as vibrant as possible. Now in this exercise, we go all the way down to our bottom G. I don't really bend the note that far. Sorry, I don't really do 
the note bending exercise that far down on the trumpet. And if you have a look at the exercises that I share from the Laurie Frink exercise, they don't actually go below a bottom D, I don't think, if I can remember correctly. So that's note bending, really. And when you do start to explore the benefits of note bending, then I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. Quite often, if I start the day and my notes or my sound is a little bit fuzzy, then note bending usually sorts that out. And I think that if mo oh, why don't you just start this again? Yeah. 